Where shall the Mahdi appear from? This indeed is a very deep question. And there are different sets of a hadith describing where he shall appear from. One set of a hadith describes that a group of Muslims shall march from the east. In one narration, even the land of Khurasan is mentioned. And these ahadith all predict the appearance of an army from the east riding and marching with black flags and they shall have within them the Mahdi. Now some of the famous muhaddithun, scholars of hadith, rejected all of the ahadith that mentioned the black flag and they felt that these were fabrications done by the sympathizers of the Abbasid empire. This is because the early Abbasid revolutionaries used the symbol of the black flag in their fight against the Umayyads and they eventually won. Now there is no doubt that many unscrupulous people put into fabrication a hadith praising the Umayyad dynasty, praising the Abbasid dynasty, and so on and so forth. However, we do not reject a hadith merely because of such suspicion. Rather, now in retrospect, we can easily state that the Mahdi was not from the Abbasids. And the fact that the Abbasids used the symbol of the black flag does not necessarily mean that the hadith describing the black flag is weak. In fact, quite the contrary, we can twist this around and say the very fact that the Abbasids used the black flag was because they knew of this belief amongst the Muslims that the Mahdi and the army of the Mahdi will have the black flag. So they took advantage of this hadith and they wished to prove that they were marching from the east with the black flag. However, they were not the promised army of the Mahdi and just because they used the black flag does not mean that the hadith about the black flag are da'if. Rather, the correct opinion is that the hadith of the black flag are at least hasan li ghayri, at least hasan in light of other evidences. And this is the opinion of many scholars of the past and present, such as Imam al-Dhahabi, the famous scholar of hadith, such as Ibn Kathir, the historian and muhaddith, and of course in our time, Shaykh al-Albani as well. Some of the hadith that mention the black flag are that which has been narrated in the Sunan of Ibn Majah, and also in the Mustadrak of al-Hakim, where Thawban radiallahu ta'ala an says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Three people shall fight over your treasure. Each one of them is the son of a Khalifa. And then none of these three shall be the victor. Then black flags will appear from the lands of the East. And they shall fight and they shall kill you like no other nation has been killed. In other words, there shall be a time of great trial and bloodshed. Then he said something I could not hear Thuban is saying. And then he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, when you see them, then give them allegiance, even if you have to crawl over snow to get to them, because they have Khalifatullah al-Mahdi, they shall have the Khalifa of Allah, the Mahdi in their midst. This hadith is also reported in the Mustadrak of al-Hakim as well. And al-Hakim says this is an authentic hadith upon the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. And al-Dhahabi agreed with him. And Ibn Kathir said, its isnad is very strong. However, some scholars said that it has a very slight weakness in it. And Allah knows best, the correct opinion is that it is an authentic hadith in and of itself. Ibn Kathir writes, commenting on this hadith, the treasure that is referred to in this hadith is the treasure of the Kaaba. Let me pause here for a while and give a footnote if you like. The Arabs of old, the tribe of Jurhum, they once had to abandon the Kaaba. This is way before the coming of the Prophet ﷺ, many, many hundreds of years before his coming. And they had to abandon it when the Kaaba was attacked and they were forced to bury a large treasure, a vast treasure somewhere underneath the Kaaba as it stands. And to this day, nobody has uncovered this treasure. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying that towards the end of time, Muslims are going to try to fight to get this treasure that is buried somewhere in the Kaaba. Returning to what Ibn Kathir said, the treasure that is referred to in the Hadith is the treasure of the Kaaba. Three sons of the Khulafa will fight over it and this shall be in the end of times. At this the Mahdi shall appear and his appearance shall be from the eastern lands and not from a cave of Samurra as the ignorant Rafida presume will explain what he is referring to later on. And he shall be helped by the people from the east as well. They shall support him and establish his rule and reinforce his strength. And their banners shall be black flags. For this is a banner that mandates respect and admiration since the banner of the Prophet ﷺ was black as well." End quote. So Ibn Kathir held the opinion that the Mahdi shall come from the lands of the east. 
what is referred to in our times as transoxania. And he also commented that the hadith is not a reference to the Abbasids, for he said, these are not the ones that Abu Muslim al-Khurasani came with in order to set the stage for the Abbasid empire in 132 AH. Rather, these are other black banners that shall come with the Mahdi himself." End quote. So this is one hadith which mentions that three princes, in other words, three people whose fathers were Khulafa. Are they three brothers? Are they three people? Each one is the son of a khalif from a different land. Are they two brothers and another prince? Allah knows best. Three people will fight. Their fathers were the Khulafa. Three people shall fight somewhere around the Haram, somewhere around the Kaaba, and none of these three will be the victor. After they fight, the Prophet ﷺ said, from the lands of the East shall come an army marching with black flags. And he said, they shall have the Mahdi in them. If you even have to crawl over snow to get to them, get to them because the Mahdi will be there. And this hadith in and of itself is Hassan, insha'Allah ta'ala. There is another hadith which is weak and it also mentions the black flag. And remember we said when there is more than one hadith that is weak, you can increase its authenticity to the level of Hassan. And this hadith is reported in the Jami' of Abi Isa al-Tirmidhi or the Sunan of al-Tirmidhi and also in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed where Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated, there shall appear from Khurasan black flags. Nothing shall be able to repel them until these flags are planted in Elia. Elia is one of the names of Jerusalem. So in this hadith it is narrated that black flags shall appear from Khurasan, armies carrying black flags. Nobody shall be able to defeat them until they plant their flags in Jerusalem. At-Tirmidhi said this hadith is gharib and this is one type of reference to, uh, from At-Tirmidhi that the hadith is weak. And in its chain is Rishdin ibn Sa'd. Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar said Rishdin ibn Sa'd is weak. And likewise, other scholars also agreed that one of these narrators is weak. Therefore, this chain is weak and it cannot be taken as an evidence in and of itself. Khurasan is the name given to the land that stretches in our times from modern Iraq to the borders of India. It covers the countries of Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iraq, Iran, portions of Afghanistan. This is what was called in the past Khurasan. And this is what the hadith is referring to. As we said, it has a very slight weakness in it. Yet another hadith mentioning the black flag is a very long hadith narrated in the Sunan of Ibn Majah from Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. And the phrase in it that is of relevance, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, and then shall come from the east, al-mashriq, groups of people, carrying black flags. And the hadith is a very long one. This hadith is clearly weak. It has in its isnad Yazid ibn Abi Ziyad. Yazid ibn Abi Ziyad is if you like a famous or to be more precise an infamous weak narrator of hadith. Waki ibn Jarrah, the famous scholar of hadith said, this hadith has no basis to it. And Imam Ahmed commenting on Yazid ibn Abi Ziyad said, his hadith about the black flags has no basis. So Imam Ahmed considered the hadith of the black flags to be da'if. However, these are now three hadith. The first of them, as we said, in and of itself, it is Hassan. The other of them in a Tirmidhi, it is weak. And the third of them, Ibn Majah, also it is weak. Put together, the concept of the black flags clearly is authentic. The first hadith is authentic in and of itself. Added to that, you have these two hadith, both of which are slightly weak. And so the concept of the black flag appears to be authentic. And we can state for certain that of the signs of the Mahdi shall then be the coming of the black flags. As we mentioned earlier, some of the famous scholars of the past considered these hadith to be weak and of the reasons given, not the sole one, was that the Abbasids used black flags as their banners in order to give the impression that they were this promised army from the East. However, as we said, we can look at this in the exact opposite light and say, why did the Abbasids want to give this impression? Because they knew of the existence of these hadith. And so in reality, the historical fact that the Abbasids came with black flags could actually lend credence to the ahadith of the Mahdi carrying the black flag. There is no doubt that the Abbasids did not have the Mahdi amongst them, but they hoped and they desired that he be amongst them. And that is why they used this concept of the black flags. Additionally, the concept of the black flags was invoked even before the coming of the Abbasid dynasty. It is reported in the famous history book of At-Tabari, Tariq al-Rusul wal-Mulk, and also Al-Bidayah wa Nihayah of Ibn Kathir, that one of the rebels against the Umayyad dynasty by the name of Al-Harith ibn Suraj claimed to be the Mahdi. And they say he took a black flag as his banner. 
Al-Harith was killed in the year 128 Hijrah and he started his preaching over a decade before this, way before the Abbasid dynasty started its preaching in the Umayyad times. Therefore, there is clear historical evidence to support the claim that the concept of a black flag was linked to the appearance of the Mahdi even before the coming of the Abbasid dynasty.